as the NBA All-Star break is over. You got nine games tonight, and now it's a mad dash, of course, to the uh, NBA playoffs. Happy to have with us now uh, a former All-Star and NBA champion, Mr. Antoine Walker, joining us from Chicago right now. Antoine, Craig, and Cody, how you doing, pal? I'm doing good. How you guys doing? Doing great. I was just taking a look at that Miami Heat championship team of yours. 12 first-round draft picks and every old guy hanging on trying to steal a ring. <laughs> hey, 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 hey. Don't do, don't do that to me. I was, I was in my eighth or ninth year. I was still kind of young. I was in my prime. If I, so that was uh, Gary Payton trying to get a ring, uh-huh. Shaq trying to get a ring, uh, Derek Anderson trying to get a ring, right? Alonzo Morning. Alonzo Jason. Morning. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Shannon Anderson. We had a whole crew. And I tell you, and you know what's crazy about that? One of those dudes is still there. Udonis has him still balling. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he from Florida. Uh, Pat Riley loves UD, so he ain't going nowhere. No, nah, he's like uh, a coach on the bench because he doesn't get a lot of run anymore. But anyhow, good to have you here. Uh, I want to talk uh, some hoops with you because as we get ready to start, you know, the quote-unquote second half of the season, we just, uh, this jar here, just uh, put a question out there that I thought was really interesting, and that is, and I hate to look at things from a failure standpoint, but what would be a bigger failure to you? KD not winning a title with the Suns or the Lakers not getting into the playoffs with LeBron? Which one of those is worse? Wow. Um, probably LeBron not getting to the playoffs just because, you know, what LeBron uh, brings to the game, how, how good he makes other players around him. Um, obviously, we know LeBron has been there a, a ton of times and has been in so many finals, but um, – He's still playing at a very, very high level. If he wasn't playing at a high level, then I would say, you know, I wouldn't even put him in that that conversation. But LeBron is still one of the top five players in the league. So you expect him to be in the playoffs and to be in the big show, and he demands so much of himself. So it would be a big, big disappointment if he's not able to make it. Yeah, it's funny, Antron, that I thought Rob Palenka did a great job at the trade deadline because they got a little younger, they got more depth. They got a legit point guard now in Russell. They got Beasley. They can shoot the three better than they could all year long. But my my concern is, you know, Anthony Davis and Anthony Davis's ability, you know, to stay on the court. So they're in 13th right now. They got 23 games to go. Do you think that they gel fast enough to go like, you know, 16 and 7, 15 and 8 and get into the play-in? Or are you concerned that it takes too long for guys to get used to playing with each other and make an actual run? I think the the infusion of the youth, the youth is going to help them. I think they do get into the, the play-in situation, and I think they do make the playoffs. I think with, with the way LeBron is playing and AD still is playing good basketball too. So I think those guys are there. It's just unfortunate they're going to have to come um, from the road. Now I don't know how good they're going to be. When you're playing the top four teams in the, in the Western Conference, because those teams are in good rhythm. They play very well at home. So the Lakers are going to have to do it from the road standpoint. So that's going to be a tough, tough task. But I do believe they make the playoffs. I, I, I see OKC could possibly fall out. The, uh, obviously, Golden State has to deal with some injuries right now. Um, the Timberwolves, you know, so and, and the Pelicans, those teams could easily fall out. And, and of a situation the Lakers can get in there. Yeah, I think the Pelicans are probably the weakest there because Zion just doesn't play. You know, when Zion plays, obviously mm-hmm. they're a different team because the dude's a stud, but you just can't you know, count on him to be on the floor. Let, let me take you over to Phoenix now. They pull off the huge trade. They give up all their depth. Mm-hmm. I'm not worried about future draft picks for the moment because you got Booker. Obviously, you got uh, Aiton. You got CP3. And now you add, for my money, when healthy, the best player in the NBA today with no disrespect to anybody else in Kevin Durant. So no depth. But they've got probably the best starting five of the teams in the West. What's your take on Phoenix uh, getting up uh, to at least the three spot, if not the se- the two spot? I'm not even worried about CD. They're going to be a tough out, no matter who they play. And you got to remember, in the playoffs, you don't play ten guys. I mean, it's nice if you're able to go that deep. But if you get into a you get into a seven to eight man rotation, the coaches really tighten it up come playoff time. Uh, These guys are going to play 38 to 42 minutes a night. So you don't worry about that. So I think right now they got a legitimate shot. Chris Paul is, you know, obviously towards the end of his career, he wants an opportunity to play in the NBA Finals. So you're going to see great basketball of him. And then KD and then Booker, 
I mean, they're going to be tough to, to, to get out. You I mean, they're, they're going to they're make a real legitimate run. And I don't care what spot they finish in, to be honest with you. I mean, if they get home court advance, that's a plus. But with KD you got, and, and Devin Booker, you got the capability of going on the road and winning big games. Uh, let me take you over to uh, the Clippers real quick. Obviously, uh, they get Russell Westbrook. So they have a, a pure point guard now. So you've got you know, two of the great scorers on the wings, uh, assuming they're healthy, which they rarely are. But you got Leonard on the left. You got a Paul George on the right. Mm -hmm. I always thought because you know the era of the big man is years ago. You don't have to worry about getting through two or three, you know, seven foot dudes who can uh, defend the low post. So I think they present matchup problems to a lot of teams because when other teams have to go small to guard them, I think the Clippers now have an advantage over teams like that. They don't have a great presence down low, but they got two dudes who can flat out score. What do you think about the Clippers with Westbrook now? They can make a deep run. I mean, I just think with Westbrook, he has to understand that he's probably going to be the third option. Um, with this team, he's got to go through Kawhi and Paul George. And can he accept that? I think he'll, he can do that now at this point in his career. Um, well, I love Westbrook. I know a lot of people are critical of him. Uh, I'm a huge fan of his. I love what he brings to the game. I love his energy that he brings. Um, I think he wants to win. If you watch the, um, the situation that he's going to be in with these guys, he'll fit right in. I think uh, I thought he did a great job with the Lakers in the situation that he was in, whether he was coming off the bench or starting. Those are humbling situations that make you want to play better. And I don't think he wants to blow this opportunity. He's, he, you know, he lives in L.A. He's playing with two great superstars. Um, and I think he's going to give it his uh, I Obviously, coming from the Lakers, he played with two great superstars as yeah. well. So it's not some, so he's something he's used to. But I'm a big West, Westbrook fan, so I believe he's going to get it done. And they got an opportunity to make a deep run as well. Yeah, I'm a Westbrook fan, too. We're talking to Antoine Walker, who won a national championship. Uh, with Kentucky, and then uh, stole a championship with Miami uh, back in 06. Uh, just kidding. Uh, let's talk real quick. Uh, I'm like one of the only guys on TV that loves Kyrie Irving. For my money, Kyrie Irving, the basketball player, is one of the 25 greatest players I've ever seen play basketball. And I don't care what area you want to talk about. He just does things a lot of guys can't do. He goes to Dallas. It looks like he and Luka haven't yet figured it out. To be fair, it's only a couple games. But give me a little taste on what you expect from the Dallas Mavericks and how long it's going to take them to figure it out with two guys who are typically guys that play with the ball in their hands, having to figure out which one of those uh, plays off ball. I think it's going to be a short period of time. you got to remember, Kyrie Irving played with LeBron James. So he knows how to play with a superstar. And he'll be fine. He'll be able to delegate to Luka when Luka needs to go. And he will have no problem fitting in. The biggest thing is those other guys, the role players, can they fit in with limited opportunities on the offensive end? Can they make open threes without, without getting a lot of attempts? Can they rebound? Are they going to be ready to go night in and night out? Because when you play with two ball-dominant guys that have the capability of getting 30 points a night, you got to be prepared to do other things on the floor, especially if you're trying to win a title. So those are the little things. And that just gets speaking from experience. Think about I played with Shaq and D. Wade, and I was averaging 20 points in my career. But I had to understand that it was their team. We had to go through them, and I had to figure out what my role would be on the team. So if the, the guys on the Mavericks can do that, sky's the limit how good uh, Kyrie and Luka can be. Hey there. Thank you so much for watching The Carton Show. You can subscribe right here to get all the latest bits and segments from the show. And by the way, while you're at it, we have a lot of great shows on FS1. So check them out, too.